please don't forget to subscribe because a lot of people that watch my videos don't subscribe apparently and hit that bell so you stay informed with the latest and greatest videos from this channel i'm also live every day on twitch.tv slash hasanabi after 11 a.m pacific do you don't want to believe it what are you talking about I'm saying that, like, it's not fake news. This is real. This is very real. It's happening right now. What those strikes are targeting, but our colleague Fred Plaikin, who is on the Russian side of the border, just about 30 miles away, has said that he has been hearing helicopters in the skies in, uh, near Belgrade. Okay. Here is live on CNN air. Matthew Chance hearing a loud explosion coming in. Right here behind resist. Oh, I tell you what, I just heard a big bang right here behind me. I told you we shouldn't have done the live shot here. <laughs> there are big explosions Crazy. taking place in Kiev right now. Um, I can't see where they're taking place from this vantage point here on top of the roof of the hotel in central Kiev. And... I can't explain what they are, but I heard four or five explosions a few moments ago. I don't know whether our viewers or whether you in the studio there could hear uh, what, we could what, hear it, what I just heard. You could resist. Oh. I don't understand sending truths to DPR and LPR, but shelling Kiva's psychotic. There's no shot. I mean, dude, who knows? Okay. Who fucking knows? At this point, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Multiple Ukrainian cities, video streams, different vantage points in Ukrainian cities. Yeah, well, we've been looking at it. Uh, we believe that the door to a peaceful solution to the they, Ukraine issue definitely is touch not on fully this shut. The here, uh, any I mean, I, I feel like they're not, like, the UN people are, the UN is not even addressing it at all. China is speaking now. Let's hear what the fuck China has to say. China's position on safeguarding the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all states has been consistent. The purposes and principles of the UN Charter should be jointly upheld. We hope that all parties concerned will stay cool-headed and rational and commit themselves to enhance dialogue and consultation to resolve relevant issues properly through negotiations and address each other's legitimate security concerns in line with the principles of the UN Charter. It is especially important at the moment to avoid fueling tensions. China will continue to promote peace talks in its own ways and welcomes and encourages all efforts aimed at a dip diplomatic solution. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of China for his statement and I now give the floor to the representative of Brazil. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> I would like to thank the Secretary General and the Under Secretary General Rosemary Di Carlo for the information and remarks they have put before the Council tonight. Mr. President, the reports received about the movement of troops into certain areas of Donetsk and Luhansk in Ukraine are cause for extreme concern. The threat or use of force against the territorial integrity, sovereignty, and political independence of a UN member state is unacceptable. In the present circumstances, what a weird situation. the Security Council must act according to its main purpose as holder to watch, of the like, primary actual shelling and bombing occurring in fucking Nations Ukraine. Charter. For the All these dudes are like having a formal conversation, security. a formal discussion about, the exercise of you know, finger wagging against Vladimir Putin when like, obviously the last time you motherfuckers did this, it didn't work. Like negotiation or nothing like there's no, the, the, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the, the formalities are, I guess, something that you have to do. Um, listen. These are the consequences of liberalism. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. All right, let's hear what CNN Keep, has to say. Um, anything, any explosions? Stop saying appeasement moment. They didn't even do appeasement. Russia moved too fucking quickly, dumbass. Shut the fuck up. Appeasement requires diplomacy. They didn't even do diplomacy. They did nothing. 
They just did like, oh, we're going to do sanctions. Please stop it. You don't even know what the fuck you're... You don't even know what you're saying, okay? These seem like quite a distance away. You could hear them in the distance. Still in Kiev, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a big city. And we've got this good panorama across the city here now. Um, and it's not quite clear, and I've been speaking to our security advisors here, it's not clear what uh, may have been targeted. But obviously, this is the capital of Ukraine. Uh, the defence ministry is here. The foreign ministry building is right behind us here. You know, government buildings, command and control centres are here. And of course, there are also units of the Ukrainian military on the outskirts of the Ukrainian capital as well, um, which are positioned, obviously, to defend the city from any kind of ground invasion. The reason I, I raise that is because one of the elements of the US intelligence has been passed on to the Ukrainians, according to the Ukrainian officials that I've spoken to, is that, you know, uh, the, the, the Russian attack, which has been, you know, which, which was, you know, talked about by this intelligence, uh, which now seems to be sort of coming to coming to fruition, mm -hmm. involved not just airstrikes, but also an element of ground attack as well. Ground skirmishes that it was described to me, um, sort of both in, in Holy Kiev fuck. and in other cities as well. And so, look, I mean, we don't know. It's difficult to explain at this point, being so distant from where these things are happening. But clearly something is happening now. And that is very different from what was happening just a few minutes ago. Simple, and, the and we, CSGO we player, already, the fucking legendary CSGO player, his city is being fucking shelled. Holy fucking shit. Russia bombed almost all military warehouses in key cities. Another explosion about to be heard on CNN. Keep tuned on it. Wait, oh, because it's delayed? Is that why? It's now uh, to have been launched any bloodshed for that would be on the hands of the the ukrainian government now i haven't had any reaction yet from ukrainian officials but they will be watching this and i will get reaction but what they but they've obviously condemned it uh, already or condemned the build-up of forces that have led to this and have welcomed the sanctions that have been placed on russia uh, as a result of its recognition uh, a couple of days ago of those rebel republics in the east of the country and they've called for more sanctions to be placed on russia uh, more tougher uh, sanctions that they hope will deter vladimir putin from going any further and i can only imagine uh, I could predict that those calls are going He's to get He's in Katowice right now for attorney, but resides in these, Kiev. Um, as, as, this, as this continues. Another big explosion oh, right there. Do you have the... Right there. I don't know whether you heard that. Where did that come from? Yeah, we're going to move to the other camera. We can move to the... Yeah, oh yeah, we already... This is the explosion in Kharkiv that happened earlier today. Look, look at that top right... Top right corner. Look at that one more time. The new follower footage superimposed over the bombing. Uh, yeah. Hundreds reportedly dead from that explosion. Wait, really? Odessa reports explosions downtown believed to be a munitions facility. So what, they're like targeting all of the uh, strategic positions inside of uh, civilian territory where there are like, you know, they're just, they're, they're blowing up their map of some of the Ukrainian, uh, Russian attacks being reported across Ukraine. So these are all the what, like, uh, uh, I guess, military positions, I assume. Should I do my uni project to just get it for the nukes to fly? Dude, live the ML MLRS systems deployed against Ukrainian positions.
Isn't this sometimes fake? Bro, I was supposed to fucking order food. I totally forgot. God damn it. Holy shit. That's crazy. Don't play not verified. Yeah, Ukraine had... Um Isn't that poster like a known fake news poster? Yeah, I think like some of those, uh, some of those posters are not real news. Some of those posters are fake news. So I'll, I'll, you know, be more clever about what's going on. But nonetheless, worth repeating. Ghana unreservedly stands by the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. A bona fide member of the United Nations, whose membership of this organization provides for her guarantees over her internationally recognized borders. The same borders with which she joined this organization. We are aware that the current developments in the eastern regions of Ukraine would not lead to a strategic gain for any party. These guys are going to end it, dude. We I promise. They're going to end war, bro. Both immediate and long-term interests. They're going to fucking end the war, bro. They're going to they're going to do it. That's and that's. Battle. They're getting to it. Okay. The preamble of the charter. We remind all parties to practice tolerance, and live together in peace with one another as good neighbors. Finally, we take this opportunity to urge all member states to exercise restraints on the respective unsettled but accepted situations across region. the globe. You can see it there on the map. Okay, fuck this. Kiev. All right, I'm moving on uh, to American would, news would coverage. Signal that this operation Shit uh, sucks. is a large one. Uh, we don't know if it's as large as U.S. authorities had feared, but it is certainly much larger than just simply entering the Donbass from the east. I should mention that we've also learned tonight that civilian flights over Ukraine have been restricted, uh, particularly over northeastern Ukraine there. This is believed uh, uh, the restriction came after a warning from Russia to flights entering these areas that they do so at their own risk. We also know that a no-fly notice had been issued for the Kharkiv airport. That's the city just to the north of the Donbass where I said they're hearing explosions as well at this hour. As I mentioned, the second largest city in Ukraine after the Ukrainian military reported Russia may target Kharkiv in an attack. And in fact, tonight, these explosions would signal that, in fact, is the case. Uh, you heard Martha mention earlier that U.S. authorities had urged President Zelensky uh, to leave Kyiv. Uh, but in addressing the Ukrainian people, uh, he made it very clear that he was staying put, at least for now. James Longman, our foreign correspondent in Moscow, listening to Vladimir Putin uh, these last couple of days, his address to the Russian people, making the case uh, for moving in, declaring those two separatist regions independent. And James Vladimir Putin coming back on uh, television in Russia just tonight, declaring a special military operation now underway. Uh, and he told Ukrainians to lay down their arms. That's right, David. And I think the choreography of this was really rather extraordinary. The timing of this message, just as the United Nations Security Council was meeting, and actually just as the gavel went down after the Russians stopped speaking, we heard those explosions in Kiev. They know how to send a message. This is about undermining international cooperation. That is what Vladimir Putin has sought to do for years. And he's done that because he wants to divide his enemies in order that he can carry out his objectives. And we heard in that statement he gave earlier today that word denazification a loaded loaded comment there very similar to the, the the words he's been using around what he believes to be happening down in the eastern part of ukraine this word genocide he's used it time and time again this is about appealing to his people to say to them this is not an offensive war this is a defensive war we are saving people in the donbass and he's warned off uh, other foreign elements. He's saying to the rest of the world, don't come anywhere near us because we are in the process of saving the people of eastern uh, Ukraine. Uh, obviously, these comments are uh, yeah, no defensive uh, fucking defensive war dude, totally. to what is actually happening in that country. But this was a message squarely. This is not defensive in any meaningful capacity, chatters. Okay, straight the fuck up. Nothing about this is defensive. This is offensive. This isn't even like. This isn't even like aggressively posturing. This isn't like fucking putting boots inside of Donbass. This isn't recognizing the the uh, the territorial integrity of of uh, you know uh, Russian 
regions uh, that Russian separatists have fucking carved out. This is absolutely full-scale fucking invasion. Uh, yeah, this is Kyle Rittenhousing uh, Donbass, basically. Or, or not Donbass, sorry, Ukraine. Um, anyway. It's bullshit that he has been on in 2008, the war in Georgia, where, again, he uh, sought to move military, move the Russian military into an area that had, he had declared independent. The annexation of Crimea. This is part of Vladimir Putin's playbook. Uh, is he the cold, calculated KGB former profiler, or is he a man bent on achieving and this is his like fucking, true objective? This is in Georgia. Is I mean, no the disrespect Empire. to Georgia, but like, this is crazy. It was a very, very scary speech, David. Just an extraordinary split screen playing out on the world stage. Uh, the, the reality that Vladimir Putin is trying to present to the Russian people versus uh, what the West has signaled to the world for several Biden weeks now about Vladimir Putin's plans in Ukraine. I should mention we're hearing sirens now going off in in. Biden released a statement. President Putin has chosen a premeditated war that will bring a catastrophic loss of life and human suffering. Russia alone is responsible for the death and destruction this attack will bring. The prayers of the entire world over the people of Ukraine tonight as they suffer an unprovoked and unjustified attack. Uh, explosion and gunfire heard near Kiev, Borispil Airport. Okay, okay, stop. No, no OSINT shit. No OSINT shit. Only, only legit sources, like verified sources. No OSINT shit, please. Um, motherfucker said uh, thoughts and prayers. I can, dude, <laughs> Biden thoughts and prayers, uh, Ukraine boys. Okay. That's it. We're good. We're good now. Um, it's good. No world war three. I'll be monitoring the situation for the white house this evening and we'll continue. Oh, dude, it's way past his bedtime. There's no shot. There's no fucking shot he monitors anything, dude. He's in his pajamas right now. He's like 700 years old. I'll be monitoring the situation with the White House this evening and will continue to get regular updates from my national security team. Tomorrow I will meet with my G7 counterparts in the morning. Yeah, okay, dude, sure. Totally, I, I believe that. Monitoring in his jammies. Okay, um... Christ. Tomorrow, I will meet with my G7 counterparts in the morning and then speak to the American people to announce the further consequences of the United States and our allies with partners will impose on Russia. Oh, uh, fuck. Dude, there are 77 Ukrainians watching right now. Hey, listen, boys, uh, I hope you're safe, okay? That's all I got for you. Uh, I don't know what else to say other than I hope, you know, I hope you're all right. Be safe. I've been talking about this, this buildup, this massive buildup on three sides of Ukraine. What's not on the map are the 20 ships down here that are capable of an amphibious landing. <clears throat> we know that the Russians have over 400 Iskander surface-to-surface -surface missiles arrayed around the country to cover 95% of this country. So the initial strikes that we think we're hearing right now, right out of the Russian playbook, would be cruise missiles to take out things like surface-to-air missile systems, air defense uh, systems that the Ukrainians would have. That would clear the path for waves of bombers and attack aircraft to continue to hit things like uh, power plants, command and control, uh, internet command centers. So the whole idea here in these first hours will be to create confusion, to separate the government from its people, to separate the government from their military, and to create the confusion that they hope will allow them to begin a ground invasion. That's the, what's anticipated. Where that comes and when is the question, and it will probably take us hours to see what happens and what Mr. Putin's true goal is in a ground invasion. Steve Gandrew with us, tracking the potential scenarios that we could watch play out in the coming hours. We're just learning that there's a statement coming in from the White House. Let's go back to Cecilia for that. Cecilia? 
Uh, David, the president is saying that, uh, of course, he is praying for the people of Ukraine tonight, but uh, perhaps he is really pointing this directly at Vladimir Putin. President Putin, quote, has chosen a premeditated war that will bring a catastrophic loss of life and human suffering. Russia alone is responsible for the death and destruction this attack will bring, and the United States and its allies and partners will respond in a united and decisive way. The world will hold Russia accountable. David, he will be meeting with G7 allies in the morning. He says that he will be speaking to the American people to announce further consequences. And that, of course, is those sanctions, what, what the White House has been describing, some of the most severe sanctions ever levied. We expect to hear from the White House tomorrow. David. Cecilia, thank you. Again, you're watching ABC News live coverage of what Russia is calling a special military operation, what U.S. authorities in the West will likely call a an invasion and a full-scale invasion was what they had been warning of all day saying it was imminent given the intelligence on the ground Vladimir Putin announcing that this military operation claiming it's intended to protect civilians but before we go off the air for now I did want to check back in with Ian panel our chief foreign correspondent there in in Kiev and Ian, I don't know what the, the fuck's going on in, in Kiev if there's bombs blowing up in Kiev or not like they fucking made it seem like the bombs are blowing up in Kiev but now I don't know this will be a war of choice and it won't be bloodless what is that fucking noise yeah that's right I mean it's is it just like people driving really fast dark day for Europe we're potentially now looking at the first conflict between two sovereign nation armies in Europe since the end of the Second World War. Uh, I think Ukrainians will start to wake up. They'll be hearing the news. They'll be hearing the explosions. Since we've been on air, we've heard at least three more distinct large explosions in the night sky here in Kiev. It's not possible to know exactly what's caused them or indeed what the targets are. But of course, against the backdrop, Russian Spetsnaz at Kiev airport, Turkish cargo Vladimir planes Putin, are in the same airport. Uh, one would imagine that it could potentially be uh, some kind of Russian airstrike, but it's a dark day for the country and people will wake in a climate of fear. The David, sirens are, the sirens are like uh, the uh, uh, fire department sirens. They're not like fucking uh, bombing sirens. Vladimir Putin declaring a special military operation, what the West is calling an invasion tonight of Ukraine. Putin warning other countries that any attempt to interfere with this Russian action would lead to, quote, I don't think those were air raid sirens. Uh, as you heard from Cecilia, already reacting tonight with prayers for the Ukrainian people and warning that there will be consequences for Vladimir Putin having taken this action tonight. We're going to continue to monitor these developments. We'll be back on the air as soon as there is something major that develops. Our coverage will continue at ABC News Live, abcnews.com. Again, Nightline later tonight and Good Morning America first thing in the morning. I'm David Muir here in New York. Thank you for watching. Wait, are they fucking done? What the fuck? That's crazy. You can't really be fucking ending the special report. What are you wild? Are you wilding out, dude? Marco Rubio believes it's actually Spetsnaz, but how the fuck do we know? Russia is now working on establishing air superiority via targeted surgical strikes, a pincer movement to trap Ukrainian force in the east and cut them off from Kiev. Finally attempted to finally attempt to decapitate Ukrainian government by targeting government buildings. Meanwhile, the UN Security Council All is still going. All of the Secretary going. General's statements and calls on parties to avail themselves of the good offices which the Secretary General has offered. The President of Mexico declared just this morning that we will not accept the invasion of one country by another since it is against international law. We recall once again that Russia, a few days ago, in this very chamber, before the international community, made an emphatic declaration that it would not invade Ukraine. Uh, the Yeah, that was a fucking lie, dude. Well, the sun's coming up in uh, in Ukraine, so that's cool. Um Wait, oh, they're still doing uh coverage. They're not done. They're not they're not ending it. I thought they were going to end it. Bro, no shot, that's real. Breaking Russian VDV forces confirmed in control of Kiev's airport. Oh my fucking god. Dude, how the fuck did they take over, like, everything in Ukraine? In literally a second, by the way. Pictures of the fire in Kharkiv. Yeah, we, uh, we saw this uh, before.
president took the Taliban to retake Afghanistan. America gave up Afghanistan to the Taliban and it, they couldn't fucking take over an entire uh, uh, country with like built military this fast. Like this is, I know I made fun of like people talking about fucking hearts of iron shit, but like this is literally blitzkrieg hearts of iron shit. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know where this is going. I don't know if it's like full-blown occup... Uh, this is a full-blown occupation of Ukraine. This is clearly not a fucking limited uh, uh, special operations exclusively with the, with the goal of, of uh, cutting off uh, uh, the Donbass region, like Eastern Ukraine, Russian territories, or anything like that. This is a straight-up fucking... Oh, is the Russian rep talking at the... Oh, let's hear what the fuck he has to say. the Ukrainian fairy tales that those living in Donetsk are all but shelling themselves. It is no surprise that the increasing suffering of those living in the Donbass does not seem to affect our Western colleagues. Through the whole day of debate today at the General Assembly, you haven't been able to find one word of compassion or condolences. It is as if these four million people for you simply don't exist i mean dude come on bro I would like to recall that the that's bullshit i mean like quality of state yes there is ongoing conflict and ongoing war and a lot of fucking russians have died uh, there but like jesus christ are you are you today. serious according to the declaration on the principles of international law motherfucker you can't take over kiev and the kiev airport and be like oh man we're defending donbass they should be fully complied with as regards states who and i quote Conduct themselves in insanity. compliance with Absolute the fucking insanity, of equal dude. rights and self-determination of peoples, and thus possessed of a government representing the with a, with a, the whole people without distinction of race, creed, or color. The whole people living in that territory. End of quote. Today's government in Ukraine simply is not that, and the tragedy in Ukraine started indeed after the illegal. Ma coup in Maidan in 2014, when rather than dialogue with the Russian-speaking citizens of Ukraine, the new authorities brandished guns and airplanes at them. Information and testimony to this end is more than sufficient. However, our Western colleagues pre prefer not to notice this. We tried yesterday and today, yesterday before yesterday, to explain to you the logic of the decision made by Russia to recognize the LPR and DPR. And we I focused on pee. the need to ensure peace and security. I'll be back. I have to pee. There. Fuck. However, you don't want, didn't want to hear from, hear this and you don't want to hear it now. For you, those living in the Donbass are simply pawns in a geopolitical game focused on weakening Russia and promoting the uh, block from NATO to its borders. For us, these people are women, children, the elderly, who for eight years have been cowering from Ukraine's shelling and provocations. For us, these are Ukraine people and not the Maidan authorities. In this, this is the difference in our approaches. If you do not change the geopolitical lens, you will never understand us. Then, on, on those on whose behalf this decision I mentioned was made, and who didn't, who you've not even thought about for over these eight years, simply calling them pro Russian separatists and terrorists. Those people are the most important for us. I'd like to say once again that the root of today's crisis around Ukraine is the actions of Ukraine itself, who for many years were sabotaging its obligations under the Minsk package of measures. Last week, even, there was a hope that Kiev would rethink and nevertheless implement what it signed up to do in 2015. For this, first and foremost, they needed direct dialogue with Donetsk and Lugansk. However, further confirmation that Ukraine is not ready for this type of dialogue and steps to grant Donbass special status as set forth in the Minsk agreements, while us, with the support of this position from Western backers, finally convinced us that we simply cannot force those living in the Donbass to suffer more. And as much as I already said, the Ukrainian provocation against the, those in Donbass not only has not stopped, but has intensified, the leaders of the LPR and the DPR turned to us with a request to provide military support in line with bilateral uh, cooperation agreements as a, a, agreed at the same time as they were recognition. This is a logical step, which is a consequence of the actions of the Ukrainian regime. During this meeting, the president of Russia... Putin spoke with 
uh, and said that he made a decision for a special military operation in the Donbass. We don't know all the details today, but briefly I would like to inform you that from his uh, statement it says that the occupation of Ukraine uh, is not in our plans. The aim of this special operation is to protect the people Trump who is on for Fox over eight News. years have been suffering genocide, genocide from the Kiev regime. And for this, we will de aim to demilitarize and degenocide in Ukraine. And also... Degenocide. And, and hold accountable those... Degenocide, more so like just regenocide. Including the including citizens of the Russian Federation. This decision was made in line with... No, she fucking... She's, she just mistranslated. It's not a big deal. Uh, I mean... And the sanction of the He, he just meant denazify. De fulfilling uh, the agreement on and recognition of the LPR and DPR. We're receiving a lot of information and we will analyze this and we will keep you up to speed more with this. map now, of some of the more the Russian attacks. Function as president of Again, the this, is not, this is not entirely fucking, uh, you know. What did he mic drop? What the fuck's going on, dude? Oh shit, Ukraine is speaking now. This guy, I mean, dude, his entire country is on of fire. Distinguished members of the Security Council. Secretary General, Under Secretary. Before I try to deliver parts of the statement that I came here with tonight, most of it is already useless since uh, 10 p.m. New York time. I would like to cite. Bro, the amount of people that are rushing to be like, your tweet did not fucking age well. When I said this is the hill I will die on, even though I already have like fucking apologized and said I was wrong, is absolutely fucking insane and shows one more, once again, that 90% of the fucking internet exclusively cares about L's and W's on the internet the and not anything about like the fucking safety Charter. and lives of uh, Ukrainian and people. In the judgment of the organization, are able and willing to carry out these obligations. Russia is not able to carry out any of the obligations. You're so arrogant on this, you deserve the backlash? Shut the, the ambassador fuck up, bitch. of the Russian Federation again three minutes ago confirmed that his president declared a war on my country. So before I read parts of the statement, fuck. Sorry. I would like to avail of the presence of the Secretary General and request the Secretary General to distribute among the members of the Security Council and the members of the General Assembly the legal memos by the Legal Council of the United Nations dated December 1991, and in particular, the legal memo dated 19th of December 1991 the one that we've been trying to get out of the Secretariat for a very long time and we were denied to get it. The Article 4, Paragraph 2 of the Charter reads, the admission of any such state to membership in the United Nations will be affected by a decision of the General Assembly upon the recommendation of the Security Council. Mr. Secretary General, please instruct the Secretariat to distribute among the members of the Security Council and the members of the General Assembly a decision by the Security Council dated December 1991 that recommends that the Russian Federation can be a member of this organization. Fighting confirmed as by well as a decision Ukrainian officials by in the Kiev, General Assembly Kiev dated Airport. December 1991. Fighting confirmed by U Ukrainian General officials in Kiev Airport. The Russian Federation. Here. To the Missile strikes. It would be a miracle if the Secretariat is able to produce such decisions. There is nothing in the Charter of the United Nations about continuity as a sneaky way to get into the organization. 
So when I was coming here an hour ago or so, I was intending to ask the Russian ambassador to confirm on the record. Yes, Russia officially declared war that the Russian earlier troops today. Will not start firing at Ukrainians today and go ahead with the offensive. It became useless 48 minutes ago. Because about 48 minutes ago, your president declared the war on Ukraine. So now I would like to ask the ambassador of the Russian Federation to say on the record that at this very moment, your troops do not shell and bomb Ukrainian cities. That your troops do not move in the territory of Ukraine. You have a smartphone, you can call Lavrov right now. We can make a pause to let you go out and call him. If you are not in a position to give an affirmative answer, the Russian Federation ought to relinquish responsibilities of the President of the Security Council, pass these responsibilities on to a legitimate member of the Security Council, a member that is respectful of the Charter, and I ask the members of Security Council to convene an emergency meeting immediately and consider all necessary draft decisions to stop the war. Because it's too late, my dear colleagues, to speak about de-escalation. Too late. The Russian president declared the war on the record. Should I play the video of your president? Ambassador, shall I do that right now? Or you can confirm it. Do not interrupt me, please. Thank you. Then don't ask me questions when you are speaking. Proceed with your, proceed with your statement. Anyway, you declare the war. It is the responsibility of this body to stop the war. So I call on every one of you to do everything possible to stop the war. Or should I play the video with your president declaring the war? Thank you very much. Hence, I must say that I thank the representative of Ukraine for his statement and the questions I wasn't planning to answer them because I've already said all I know at this point. Waking up what the fuck's this, going on? to love Rob at this time is not something I plan to do. You said the information that we have will be something we provide. And this isn't called a war, this is called a special military operation in the Donbass. I now give the floor to the representative of Germany. Do you think if the Ukrainian guy uh, fights the Russian guy, that means they have to let go? They have to, you know, it's like trial by combat? The president of the Russian Federation announced a military operation on Ukrainian territory. We condemn this in the strongest possible terms. And we call upon all members Imagine of the Imagine being like, Council hey, uh, I know we're bombing Nations your fucking capital and Ukraine like all of your big cities, but again, it's not a war. Against a shameless breach of international law. Two days ago, Russia's decision to recognize the self-proclaimed so-called People's Republics of Donetsk and Luhansk was harshly rejected in this council. It had already dealt a devastating blow to the principles and the international order that the United Nations stand for. Russia has not listened, and it turns out it was not prepared to listen. It has continued its massive military buildup, and we observed and observe cyber attacks directed against Ukraine, and now Russian military is moving into Ukrainian territory. By the actions and this unprovoked uh, military operation, Russia is violating the core principles of the UN Charter. We condemn the use of force against innocent people and the violation of the sovereignty and territorial integrity Fucking of Ukraine idiots, in the dude. strongest possible terms. We urge Russia to terminate its military action against Ukraine immediately 
and withdraw its troops. Mr. President, our thoughts are with the Ukrainian people. We will be steadfast in our support for Ukraine and our support for the UN Charter. The Russian aggression will come at an unprecedented price politically, economically and morally. It's just this. Mr. President, France, Ukraine and my country stood ready for diplomacy, for another meeting in the Normandy format or for the summit that Ukraine had proposed. With our allies and partners, we called on Russia to seek a diplomatic way forward in vain. Now is the moment to speak up and defend the international order of the UN Charter against unilateral aggression jointly and decisively. Tonight we stand with Ukraine and we are doing so unwavering and determined. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Germany for her statement. And now I give the floor to the United States who wish to, ask, to make a further statement. Thank you. In my remarks tonight, I said that we predicted Russia's false flag attacks, the misinformation, the the actual. Bro, America's literally emergency. like they're they're doing a fucking W tour. They're like, yo, we're gonna predict the misinformation, the false flag, dude. Okay, solve it, solve the problem. Unfortunately, while we've been meeting in the security. What the Council fuck are they gonna tonight, do? Are they gonna go in? Are they gonna fucking fight back? Are they President gonna Putin like actually fly uh, last planes step. into Ukraine? Are they gonna At send the in the six thousand troops at the fucking border of Ukraine? As we are gathered in the council seeking peace. Putin delivered a message of war in total disdain for the responsibility of this. Non-believers like you, was on, it doesn't council. matter. It doesn't matter that they got this one this fucking. A, it it, it got this. They got this one. The okay. Will need to act, At this point, if you are in a position of fucking power, table, you had every opportunity to fucking exhaust this, Biden exhaust diplomacy. Instead of fucking Russia endlessly being like, this is a war that's going to happen. This is a war that's going to happen. Okay, then fucking try to solve it. This attack will bring. And the United States and our They're doing ego shit, dude. It's like, you're not a fucking gray name on my Twitch chat. You're not like a fucking weirdo player. anime avatar uh, on, on Twitter Russia. being like, dude, you were so Accountable. wrong and I was so right. Who cares? I thank the representative of the United States uh, for her statement. I now would like to give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom who asked to make a further statement. Oh, thank you. As we sat in... As we sat in this chamber, urging Russia to step back, President Putin announced special military operations on Ukrainian territory. This is unprovoked and unjustified. Completely. This is a grave day for Ukraine and for the principles of the United Nations. We and our partners have been clear that there will be consequences for Russia's actions. We fully support the United States' call for a UN Security Council resolution. This council must do all it can to stop the war and uphold the Charter. Thank you. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom, and now I'll give the floor. I mean, to the, the conversations that they had Albania are about sanctions was me. way more significant and way more impactful than this. But obviously, the sanctions were uh, seen as a fucking provocation and and uh, and another reason to fucking further escalate. And it's it's it. Explosions are reported in Kiev and in several other cities in. I mean, like I said, Ukraine. it's just like fucking Georgia. Mosques are finally down. But this time. Not even in. like a fucking real threat, but one that they speak, have decided to uh, drum up. It, it, with res like one that they've decided to drum up against fucking Russian uh, uh, people living in Donbass. The land, dignity, and life. We call on all the members of the United Nations to rally in support of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, to stand with Ukraine and its people to condemn firmly and unequivocally this aggression. What if all the diplomats jump the Russian diplomat? I don't think that's how it works. I don't know, but I don't think it, I don't think that's how it works. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see if there is more here. I want to see if they, is this ended or not? That the Russians will veto it. Okay. Um, so that will then set the stage for another conversation in the general assembly. 
and the general in the general assembly which doesn't have the ability to actually do things but it can say things it will condemn it will vote to condemn russia um but it's not able bro to- they literally fucking they literally took the l on the sanctions they were like fuck it yolo Membership. sanction me such an issue for russian president vladimir putin it's a great question it is a great question everyone knows including vladimir putin that Ukraine is not ready to join NATO today or tomorrow or even next year. So why he is invading to to stop something that's not Long going range to happen missiles? anytime soon. What the soon. fuck? That makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's totally unjustified. There is no answer to your question. It's a good question and there's no answer. It's true. Realistically here, what's the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is a massive invasion uh, by these 200,000 or more troops that the Russians have uh, massed around around Ukraine. Um, the, it will be a terrible, bloody fight. Um, tens of thousands of Ukrainians will be killed, military and civilian. Thousands of Russians will be killed, military. They will go back. Your reporter in Moscow raised the right question. Do the Russian people really support this massive invasion? They I don't. It. They don't. In particular- they don't. There's literal polling data on it. They do not. This is incredibly fucking unpopular. Okay? They don't. They straight there's up do not. There is so very likely to- that, along with like 11 other fucking reasons uh, as to why this was so hyper unlikely uh, and an ongoing like active fucking war, potential counterinsurgency that they have to deal with. I mean, a counterinsurgency warfare uh, in their fucking doorstep. All of this made it so incredibly unlikely. It is a complete psychopathic fucking uh, action that they did. Yeah, it is, Andrew. Uh, now, what that war entails, that's the big question, and that's what we're having to, to piece together uh, in these minutes as the, uh, as the opening salvos are fired. Um, just reading a, a report from our, our person on the ground in Moscow, something very interesting. Um, and, Complete and insanity, dude. what Mr. Putin might be doing. So if we look at the map here, we know that Ukrainian intelligence today talked about that the uh, city of Kharkiv, the second largest... Uh, city in uh, Ukraine, uh, about 1.4 million people, was one of Russia's targets. They also said this little town down here called Kherson is the other target. So we said, hmm, why would those be the two? This is the port city that empties on to the Black Sea, controls all of this key economic waterway that Putin, if he held this, would con- be able to squeeze Ukraine in a way that he could essentially economically strangle the country. So if they attack here and if they attack here, the other thing we just heard was... So they're going to cut off the country from Nipro, up to this fucking right Dnepr here. River. So if you draw a line here from Kharkiv to Dnipro, that would be the only thing that the Russian army would have to take. And then this, this uh, waterway, the Dnipro River, forms a natural boundary. So now Putin could carve off essentially one-third of eastern Ukraine and be able to control the, the river and all of the exports that go down the river into the Black Sea. All of their domestic gas production is here. And this is one of the richest agricultural areas in the world. So if Putin's looking for a prize, Kharkiv, Dnipro, all the Putin way has down launched a full scale invasion the, of Ukraine. Uh, Peaceful Ukrainian cities are under strikes. This is a war of aggression. Ukraine will defend it. itself and will win the world. Kiev itself, can and must stop putting the time to act is now. I mean, they're not going to. to. What the fuck is the world going to do? It's a nuclear power. It's fucking insane that they're doing this. So that's a tough thing. But we do know. Bro, like, America did this with fucking Iraq, but even America would not do this with Mexico, okay? Like, Ukraine is still a developed nation. Ukraine is still a nation with, like, uh, it ties to fucking European nations, okay? Ukraine is literally a, a neighboring nation of Russia. This is fucking completely insane. Completely insane. Like, America rolls over developing nations on a daily basis and it's over fucking seas. And, uh, you know, and it's disgusting, but there's a white supremacist attitude that a lot of people have towards that kind of conquest in the third world. This is, like... I don't even know how to describe it. Like, uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely in insane. In all those places where they had missiles that could take down your airplanes. Once the skies are clear, then they'll launch more surface-to-surface missiles that are very, uh, very accurate, could go after critical infrastructure, power plants, things like that, uh, uh, equipment areas, military command and control. That now that you have the skies clear and you have initial uh, uh, 
air defense taken out. Now you can bring in your bombers, you bring in your attack aircrafts, and you pound the Ukrainian army from the air with no ability to defend themselves. At some point, given all the array of military ground forces we he see here, Mr. Putin will come in to Ukraine in some way with some intent. Again, don't know if he wants to go after Kyiv and bring down the government here or whether he wants to carve off this eastern part of the country. Remember that this is the, this is the rebel-held uh, area of Donbass, but this is not the all of the Donbass. The all of the Donbass goes way out here. The rebel-held area is only about a third of the Donbass. The weekend so posted, if he let's said, go. I need to go in and retake the Donbass, he's got some what work to fuck? do in here. But again, a line from Kharkiv to Dnipro down to Kirshan would give him <laughs> that one fuck? third of the country. And maybe that's enough. And Russia seems to struck first here. So how can Ukraine respond? Are they prepared militarily to respond to a Russian invasion? They are, they are much improved. The U.S. and NATO countries have been working with them to improve their military right. since they were I'm sorry to do this, but i got to run a fucking top-of-the-hour ad break. I forgot yeah. to run it last uh, hour. And in the Donbass. So uh, they've gotten better. No, no the horizon is, tonight. The, the Russian military has also gotten much better. over the You already know what to do if you want to avoid those ads.